to welcome you to our Reignite Church worship experience. Whether you're here with us in person or you're watching live online this morning, we hope that you feel how loved you are and how happy we are that you have decided to join us today. And today here at Reignite is a very special day because today is our baby dedication service. And we are so grateful to be gathered together in this place to um, have such a special time for our Reignite babies and their families. And in addition to our baby dedication service, we will be diving into week two of our gratefulness series. So be sure to have your notebooks, your tablets, pens, whatever it is that you use to take notes as we prepare to learn and grow from God's word. Now I would like to just get things started. So if we could have the praise team join me up here, please. We're going to go ahead and open up service with prayer. I would like for you, if you're in the building and online, to stand if you're able. And let's get ready for worship. Heavenly, uh, Heavenly Father, Lord God, we um, ask you to meet us in this place this morning, Father. We ask that you be here with us, that we could fill your presence in this room as we praise and glorify your holy name this morning, Lord. We love you so much, and we do all of this for you. Be within our service, be with the word as it is delivered by Pastor Marshall, and be with our baby dedication, Father God. We love you, and we pray to glorify your name. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I was buried beneath my shame. Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my tomb till I met you. I was breathing, but not. Alive. All my failures I tried to hide. It was my tomb till I met you. You called my name and I ran out of that grave. Out of the darkness into your glorious day, you called my name, and I ran out of that grave. Out of the darkness into your glorious day. Your mercy has saved my soul. Now your freedom is all that I know. The old made new. Jesus, when I met you, you called my name. glorious day you called my name and I ran out of that grave out of the darkness into your glorious day My sin was heavy, but chains break at the weight of your glory. I needed shelter. I was an orphan. Now you call me a citizen of heaven. When I was broken, you were my healing. Now your love is the air that I'm breathing. I have a future. My eyes are open. 
when you call my name. Shout it out. I ran out of that grave. Out of the darkness into your glorious day. You call my name. To your glorious day. Are you happy to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Come on, let's get excited for Jesus and all he's doing in our lives today. What he's going to do in this service and with this word. the God who was, we worship the God who is, we worship the God who evermore will be. He opened the prison doors, he parted the raging sea, my God, he holds the victory. There's joy in the house of the Lord, there's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. Oh, oh, oh. We shout out your praise. We sing to the God who heals. We sing to the God who saves. We sing to the God who always saves away. Cause he hung up on that cross. Then he rose up from that grave. My God still rolling stones away. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise, there's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place, and we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. We were the beggars, and now we're royalty. We were the prisoners, and now we're running free. We are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by His grace. Let the house of the Lord sing praise. We were the beggars, and now we're royalty. We were the prisoners, and now we're running free. We are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by His grace. Let the house of the Lord sing praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. Oh, oh, oh. We shout out your praise. There is joy in his house. There is joy in his house today. Oh, oh, oh. We shout out your praise. We 
shout out your praise. Amen. Amen. All right, everybody, we're going to move into our baby dedication service. I'm going to ask all the babies to come forward, parents, grandparents, godparents, friends, if you're here, would you come on down? Thank y'all for being here this Thanksgiving weekend. I know y'all could be anywhere else, out of town, visiting family. We're going right up on the stage, right up on the stage. Everybody. Try to work through this. I don't want to be popping, but I uh later. Oh, look at that. He got a little hat on and everything. Y'all y'all see little Little baby JT3 over there with the hat on. Oh, my God. And the bows on the head. Look at this vest. Oh, my gosh. All right, I'm going to try to hold still so I don't pop until I, I preach later. Um, because of COVID, we're, we're adjusting. Normally, I would lay hands on the baby, but I'm not doing that today. So I'm just going to speak over them, okay? All right, here we go. Family and friends, welcome to Reignite's Baby Dedication Service. And because children are too young to understand baptism, we, by request, by request, dedicate them to the Lord until they're old enough to come to the Lord for themselves. That's why we do this. Amen. Scriptures bear witness to the fact that in biblical times, parents dedicated their children to the Lord in service. Hannah brought her child and dedicated him to God and to the service of his house. Mary brought... Um, the mother of Jesus brought him, according to Moses, to the law of Moses, up to Jerusalem um, to dedicate him to the Lord. So we're confident that, that of divine approval, as we dedicate your child to God, to his service, that this would be something that God is pleased in being. It is our duty as a Christian congregation to receive children into the care in the church and to minister to them to their welfare in every possible way. Matthew, Matthew 18 says this, beware that you do not look down on any of these little ones. For I tell you that in heaven, their angels are always, their angels are always in the presence of my heavenly, heavenly father. In Deuteronomy, it says this. I hear you, baby. You may be preaching one day. In Deuteronomy 6, it says this, and you must commit yourselves wholeheartedly to these commands that I'm giving you today. Repeat them and again and again to your children. Proverbs 22, 6 says, direct your child, your children, unto the right path, and when they are old enough, they will not leave it. God has a purpose for your child, family. To find that purpose and to live it out fully will mean blessing. To refuse it or ignore it will mean failure. It is your privilege as a family and duty to guide your child in such a way to make the will of God the greatest ambition of his or her life. To this task, you are called to dedicate yourself today. <clears throat> I don't want to pop on that part. To this task, y'all are dedicated. Y'all are called to dedicate yourselves, parents. This isn't about just the baby. To dedicate yourselves. Also, to this end, you dedicate your child to the Lord. In accordance with this purpose for which you have come, you will now please respond with the following covenant. Parents, grandparents, godparents, this is for you. Do you dedicate yourselves as parents 
grandparents or godparents to bring up your children in the nurture and admonition of the Lord? If so, p- please respond by saying we do. Do you promise to instruct this child in the Bible and in the practice of prayer to guide them in the development of Christ-like character and to diligently bring them to the service of the church where they will be taught the way of life? If so, respond by saying we do. Last question. Do you promise to the best of your ability to do so to shape the home life of your child by sharing devotions, encouragement, and by being a living example so they will naturally at the proper age, experience an open acknowledgement of Jesus Christ for themselves. If so, you are approved this day. (laughs) Church family, would you stand with me and stretch your hands forward in agreement? Stretch your hands forward in agreement. Dallas Dovich, Jamison Ellard, Story Ray Smith, and John Turner III. I dedicate you to God and to his service and to his kingdom in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. May we all say amen. In recognition of your child's dedication today, we have a special gift for you. They have the, we have their first Bible, a little baby Bible, and we have a certificate that your parents you guys have to sign. And it'll be at the connections table on your way after service. Please go by the connections table and sign that certificate. So let's bow for a closing prayer. Father, we ask your blessing and protection for this child that we are dedicating today. We also pray for your grace, wisdom, and strength for the parents and family, the extended family, and all the loved ones that are going to participate in raising them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. All right, church family, worship isn't over yet. Let you all get back to your seats.
lifted me up from the ashes. You carried my soul from dead to life, bringing me from glory to glory. You were my rescue story. You never gave up on me. You never gave up on me. You were my testimony. Oh, you never gave up on me. You never gave up on me. You were my testimony. Oh, you never gave up on me. Oh, you never gave up on me. Oh, this is my testimony. Father, Lord God, we ask you to be in this place with us right now, and we thank you for being our rescue story. Each person in this room and watching online has a story, has a testimony, something that you've saved them from, redeemed them from, rescued them from, Father. And Lord God, we just thank you for that this morning. And I believe that there are some people in this room that are in a place where they're waiting on you for something. They're waiting on, you've rescued them, you've saved their lives, and they're trusting in you and hoping in you. But they're waiting for this breakthrough moment in, in something going on in their lives, Lord God. And I just pray this morning in this next song that we can block out all distractions, things going on in the home, things going on in the sanctuary, Lord God. And just close our eyes and remember that this is for an audience of one. And that is you, Heavenly Father. And we're singing out to you this morning. And we're asking for a breakthrough. In Jesus' name, amen. be more beyond familiar shores into waters unexplored this one desire stirring here in me deep is calling out to deep take me from where i've been into something new i'm giving up control I need a breakthrough. All of my dreams and fears are crashing into you. You're waking up my hope. You are my breakthrough. It's what you always do. 
Father, Lord God, we thank you for meeting us in this place, Lord, for being our breakthrough, Father. We know we've got a lot going on right now, Lord, in, in our lives and in the individual lives of the people here, Lord God, but I pray that we can fix our focus on you this morning, Lord, as we sing, Lord, and now as we receive the word, to be ready to receive whatever message it is you have for us this morning and come expecting you to do something amazing today, Lord. We love you, and we do it all for you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We'd like to invite Pastor up to deliver the word. Kids, you are free to go to Reignite Kids Church. My, 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 my. Devil can't stop me now. Devil can't stop me now. Oh man, man, man. So we are in week two of our series called what? Gratefulness. Gratefulness. Did y'all enjoy the first week? All right, all right. I think God has something for us today. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you for the opportunity, Lord, to see these baby, babies dedicated to you. Father, I've, Father, I've studied, but I need your strength. And I've prayed yet. I still need your power to give these good folks something to leave bigger than when they came. So, Father, would you do it? Do it for them. Do it for them. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So we're in our we started our end of the year series called Gratefulness. And here's the definition of gratefulness. The definition is a deep appreciation for kindness received, gratitude, or thankfulness. So everybody say uh, gratitude and thankfulness. Yeah, our goal of this series is, is to experience what it means to live a life full of grace. So I asked on week one, what are you full of? Look to somebody next to you and say, you're full of something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's an expectation inside of you. And last week I gave, I had an orange and I asked if we squeeze the orange, what do we expect to come out of it? And a lot of people incorrectly said orange juice because I had, in, I had infused the orange with black ink. And now when I squeezed the orange, ink came out of the orange. See, whatever is inside of you, that's what's going to come out of you. So ask the person next to you again, what are you full of? <laughs> gratitude or thankfulness? If gratitude or thankfulness is missing, then that's not gratefulness. Did you hear what I said? If one of those things is missing, that's not gratefulness. Yeah. Have you ever been cooking and you've missed an ingredient and yet you tried to cook it anyway 
and expected the same result that you always get. You expected it to taste the same. You expected it to look the same. But you was missing an ingredient. Gratefulness is like that. Sometimes we're missing gratitude. Sometimes we're missing thankfulness. But yet we're still expecting. We're still expecting God to see that, you know what? Bless my life because I'm grateful. But you're not thankful. Oh, my gosh. Maybe you, maybe you had a neighbor like mine. I had this neighbor in another state where she came over to borrow something all the time. So one, one, day, one day, Martine, she came over to borrow an egg. I'll lend the lady an egg. No, no problem. Here, take a couple of eggs. And then the same day, she came over to borrow milk because she was making a cake. And I'm like, you're not making a cake. I'm making a cake. You ain't got none of the ingredients. <laughs> Hopefully, you're not that neighbor. <laughs> Don't look to the left or the right if you've done it. But if you've ever had a specific item that you tried to cook with and the ingredient was missing, it's true. We all expect it to taste the same. We expect it to be productive in what we're, making it, we're trying to make it look like. We're, spe- we're expecting it to produce the same result, even though we swap out something. In our text today, in our text, Scripture says that there's an ingredient that there's a recipe for contentment. I hope you're full of contentment by the end of this message. There's a recipe for contentment. And the recipe for contentment I found in my study is that the recipe has two main ingredients. Everybody say two. Put two in the chat if you're watching online. I know you're watching online because a lot of y'all are at home right now with family and friends. And that's all good. It's all good. There's two main ingredients for contentment, and you can't remove and replace those and expect that you're going to have the same result in your life. In Philippians 4, verse 12, Paul, the author of our text, the Apostle Paul, he passes this ingredient along. Are y'all listening in the back? John, can you hear me? Okay, okay, okay. Paul says in verse 2, Philippians 4, 12, he says, I know how to live on almost nothing or with everything. Some of y'all are saying, yeah, but I don't know if y'all are ready for this. I have learned the secret of living in every situation, whether it is full, with a full stomach or an empty stomach, with plenty or a little. And this is the verse many of you know. Verse 13 says, for I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. And, 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 and as I was studying, I, I came across some other ingredients to, just to make it stick. You know I try to simplify the message, and I want you to see some things, and so you'll get it. So I brought some baking powder. I brought some accent, some, what's this, Ed? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I brought some thyme. I brought some dill weed. The weed makes everything better. <laughs> because this is what I found in the message. The message translation says it like this, and I hope you catch it. I hope you catch it. It says, I'm just happy. The same verses. I'm just happy with little as, mu- as with much. With much as with little. I have found. Are y'all reading? I have found the recipe for being happy, whether full or hungry, hands full or hands empty. Whatever I have, whatever I am, I can make it through anything in the one who makes me who I am. So I've titled our talk today. I've titled this little teaching. You came all the way down from Maryland just to hear this. I've titled the teaching, The Recipe for Contentment. Everybody say, The Recipe for Contentment. Recipes are important. They're important instructions for preparing and for producing. Oh, my gosh. You can't produce food. You can't produce a dish. You can't produce a drink without a recipe. The recipes are important. If you have the right recipe, you can produce a satisfying life. If you have the right recipe, you can produce a productive life. If you have the right recipe, according to our text, it says you can produce a life of contentment. And don't we all want that? Because sometimes y'all hungry. Sometimes y'all have a lot. Sometimes you have a little. Uh, y'all, y'all, help me, Lord, download. Sometimes you have a lot of peace. Sometimes you have a little peace. 
All it takes is the right recipe to produce contentment. And some of the best meals, some of the best meals come from repetitious recipes. Doing it over and over again, perfecting the dish, perfecting the drink, perfecting perfecting the outcome. Everybody say outcome, because that's what I'm talking about. Perfecting the outcome. And, you know, and, and, and everybody has a signature dish. Everybody does. I do. Tiffany does. We have, we have the bomb potato salad. We make the bomb potato. I don't, I'll put my potato salad up against anybody's potato salad. We make together the bomb potato salad. Our parents taught us how to do it. We make the bomb collard greens. We make the bomb sweet potato yams. We make the bomb. And some of y'all have favorite dishes, too. If I say your name, raise your hand. Anthony makes the bomb bok choy. Yeah, the bomb bok choy. I didn't even know what it was till he served it to me one day. I was like, what is this? It looks like this stuff in our garden, but it was good. Rose makes the bomb ribs, the bomb Mexican white sauce. It almost sounds racial. She makes the bomb Mexican white sauce. <laughs> but if you ask, the, the bomb pasta salad. And, and Martine, if you want dips, Martine is your specialist. Martine specializes in dips. I'm just saying, we all have a signature, uh, a signature dish that we're trying to produce. And it took repetition to make it good, right? Y'all, have y'all ever had Carolyn's sweet potato uh, pie? Carolyn makes the sweetest sweet potato pie. Then when you take that first bite, your teeth just drop right on your tongue. <laughs> it's so sweet. We all have it. Somebody's thinking, Pastor, get around. <laughs> Pastor gets around. I'm like, I'm, I'm coming to a table near you. Yeah, yeah. Whatever your signature dish is, I'm just trying to convey that it takes a recipe to start with. Amy, even your award-winning Reignite two years in a row running chili. <laughs> It takes a recipe, Amy, to come up with a perfect, repetitious product that you give us and win every time we have the chili cook-off. It starts with a recipe. But after repetition, y'all know this, we start to produce the same results from memory. We start with the recipe, then we move on to memory. Yeah. And oftentimes, we're trying to do this, Pernell, in our own life. Oftentimes, before we're there, before it's perfected, we're trying to get peace. Ah! We're trying to get peace from memory, Sammy. We're, 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 we're trying. To, I, I see you back there, Chuck. I see you back there. Sometimes we're trying to get joy from memory. And we're not there yet. It takes repetition to produce the right. Results, but you have to start with Carrie. A recipe. A recipe. Yeah. Trying to achieve the goal without the recipe is a common mistake that many of us make. Because once we think we got it, we do everything from memory. Yeah, this is how it should look. This is how it should feel. Mm, this is what they need to see. Yeah. Mm. Listen to your pastor. Don't expect to be content, to have a content life without doing it God's way, without the right formula, without the right steps. It takes the right steps to make something happen the right way. When, and when it comes to repetition, you can do the same thing over and over again and get the wrong results. But if you do the same thing over and over again, you'll get the right, you'll get the right results because you have to have the right steps. The steps start with the recipe. Bobby Brown says it like this, every little step I take. Okay, y'all haven't been to church all your life. It takes the right steps. If you want a home, it starts with the step of Loan of approval. 
If you want a friend, it starts with the first step. It starts with the first step of what? Being friendly. If you, if you want to get married, it starts with the first step of finding a person to be engaged to. And why I'm there, y'all know I say this all the time. If, 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 you, want to, if, you, want to be, if you want to be married, ladies, it starts by be, you being a wife. Right? Because the Bible says, why you say that, Pastor? Because the Bible says that he who finds a wife finds a good thing. There's many people out there trying to find a girlfriend. There's many people out there trying to find company. There's many people out there trying to find a social buddy. But if you're a wife, he'll find a wife. But you got to be a wife before you're found. That's for free. That's not in my notes. That's for free. And the recipe for the career you want requires skill and experience and study towards the right steps. But again, without the right steps, you'll get the wrong results. Yeah. How do I know this? Because our first Thanksgiving was a simple one. Our first Thanksgiving, I shared with some friends that it started with a young turkey breast. It had just, it was just the breast with all the fixings. And so what, guess what, the next year, our second year together, we had a whole turkey with all the fixings. I thought we were doing it at 22. And then I forgot a major step. Our, our second year of production with the first turkey, we skipped the step of looking inside. And so we cooked the turkey, and we're all just drooling. <laughs> it's going to be good, baby. It's like, we did good. High five. And, and we, I went to cut the turkey and stuff. I was like, what is that? Because turkeys come with innards, <laughs> giblets. But I expected the same result. But I did it the wrong way. When you have a turkey, it comes with a step of thawing it, checking it, looking inside, <laughs> and then rinsing it inside and out. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Somebody say, wobble till you gobble. Gobble till you wobble. Gobble till you wobble. Gobble till you wobble. Experience taught me this about turkeys. Experience taught me this about turkeys. The first step of turkey preparation is thawing it, removing it, removing the giblets, and rinsing it. Thawing, removing, and rinsing. The steps are the same no matter where you're preparing it. No matter who's preparing it, the first steps are the same. Then later, you can, you can make it your preference. If you want to add salt and pepper, you can add salt and pepper. If you want to put butter on top or butter inside, you can put butter inside. Whether, whether, to, whether to cook it, bake it, or fry it is the question. It all depends on your preference from there. But the initial steps of turkey preparation is thawing, looking, and rinsing. The same for everybody. Yeah. In our text, Paul is saying like turkey preparation, the process or steps for being full of contentment is the same for everybody. No matter where you are, no matter what you're going through, it's the same process. When Paul gained valuable life lessons from his experience, he discovered circumstances fa uh, facilitated his spiritual progress, and it only took two steps, two steps for him to learn this lesson. Before I give you those steps, I need you to write this down. You could take a note. In order to go through, grow through something, you have to grow through something. Can I give that again? It should be on the screen. In order to grow through something, you have to go through something. Yeah, I hope you get it. You got to grow through what you got to go through. And a lot of times we don't want to go through, so we don't grow through. I know I'm right about it. The process is the same for everybody. It doesn't matter if you're going to grow through something. It don't matter if you're black. 
It doesn't matter if you're white. It don't matter if you're rich, if you're poor, if you're Asian, Hispanic. It don't matter. It's the same steps. You got to grow through what you got to go through. There's no, there's no, uh, 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 you, you don't make progress. You don't make progress. Hear me. You don't make progress without going through something. And so if we're going to go through something, if we're going to go through something, shouldn't we know what, how to go through it? How to be empty and full and still be content? How to, be, how, how to have much and how to have little? Because we all want a lot of peace, and sometimes we have a little peace. Here's the step. The first step of living a life full of contentment is adaptability. Put adaptability in the chat. Somebody be my virtual assistant. Adaptability. Pastor, what do you mean? How adaptable are you? Mask? No mask. I was just talking to someone about that today. If you go somewhere and they say, you, I, I need you to wear a mask. I, I, don't, I don't believe in masks. You got to be adaptable. You can't change every environment. So, so control what you can. Control what you can. Mask, no mask. How adaptable are you to your situation, to your circumstances? You know, I thank God for the military because that's what the military taught me. It taught me how to adapt and overcome regardless of what was going on. We had to have that adapting mindset. Can I ask you a question, though? Is your lack of adaptability causing you problems? Do we always have to go where you want to go? Because you won't adapt. Do we always have to do it your way for you to see it? I'm working with somebody right now without saying names. That, oh my gosh, I don't care how you turn it, you set it up, turn it up, flip it down. Oh no. I don't, I don't care how you, how, you, how you present it. They won't see it. They won't see it because they don't want to see it. Man, that's hard. That's the, I, I don't mind pastoring. I, get, I will do it all day. I love you guys. I don't mind the problems. Y'all, y'all pay me to do problems. But what I get frustrated with is when God's downloading some insight and you refuse to receive it, and then he gives me examples on how to share it, and you still don't get it? Oh, my gosh. I'm not God. I'm not Jesus, Junior. And it's frustrating because you're not adaptable. Let me refresh why adaptability is important. Going back to the NLT, Philippians 4.12, your Bible gives us a few contrasts again to refresh you. It says, I know how to live on almost nothing or with everything. I have learned the secret of living in every situation, whether it is with a full stomach or empty, with plenty or little. What does this mean, pastor? He's saying in every situation, they have helped his spiritual equilibrium to balance him. Yeah. Because too much bad has ruined a lot. Too much good has also ruined a lot. God is, a, God is the great orchestrator that he mixes in a little bit of good, he mixes in a little bit of bad. God provides all the good and he allows all the bad. He doesn't cause them. Yeah, did y'all catch what I did? He provides all the good, and he allows all the bad. He's the great orchestrator. He's saying, I need to give him a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Marshall needs some weed to deal weed because it makes everything better, no matter what you're going through. It's the weed, it's the weed, it's the weed. Mm, mm, mm. But like today, there were false teachers in biblical times. There were false teachers. False teachers that came along and said, whatever you wanted to hear, I'm not one of them. I'm going to give you what? Thus says the Lord. And I'm going to try to flip it so you can see it in the reality, in, in, in a real way. But there were false teachers telling people all these good things that would bring them back. False teachers were preoccupied in the text with fine treatment and food. They were all about it. <laughs> but Paul was different. Paul, the apostle Paul, he was preoccupied with 
the right relationship. He wanted to make sure you had the right relationship. So once Paul was removed from the text, once he was removed from the context, Paul knew that you'll be able to stand on your own. So Paul pointed people to Jesus because Paul been through so much. He was shipwrecked. He was beaten. He, 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 he was abandoned. He was jailed. Paul had been through some things in his life. Paul wrote most of the New Testament because all that he had been through. Don't you like that you can talk to someone who's had experience and they can feel what you feel? Jesus is like that. Jesus is the is, is kind of God that, that knows your infirmities because he took on everything. In all points, he was tempted as we are. In all points. Paul wanted them to know that adaptability is learning to share your faith despite where you find yourself. But he always pointed people to Jesus. Yeah, I, I, I just got out of jail. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I just got off the boat. Yeah, yeah, I, but I didn't see no boat, Paul. Yeah, because I had to swim. I had to swim in. The boat was broken, and so I floated in on broken pieces. And how many of us are trying to make it on broken pieces? Yeah, yeah. So Paul didn't look like what he'd been through. So Paul said adaptability is important to faith. You can't have faith and not be adaptable. I don't care if you're in college. I don't, I, I don't, I don't care if you're working a job. It's your first job. You've been there for a long time. You still have to adapt to the circumstances. You've got to adapt. Because everybody don't see it your way. Which leads me to my next point. Verse 13 says, for I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. The first step of living a life full of contentment is adaptability. But what I'm about to share with you next is going to make whatever I told you to this point hit different. The second step to living a life full of contentment is dependability. Dependability. First step, accountability. Second step is dependability. The problem I see in culture today is we don't want to be people dependent on anybody, not even God. Yeah, I need to make some reignite shirts. Y'all like when we make merch? I need to make some reignite shirts that says hashtag dependable. So when people ask you the question, you can defend your faith. What is that, what is that about? I'm depending on God. Hashtag dependable. Yeah. Dependability encourages adaptability. When God knows he can trust you, he'll do more. Did y'all get that? When he knows he can trust you, he'll do more in your life. When he knows that he can trust that you are handle, that he's mixed in, he's allowed to mix in a little bit of bad with a little bit of good, a little bit of stress. Even though you brought it on yourself, he'll still allow it. Mm -mm -mm. But when he can trust you with more, he'll do more. Pastor, give me scripture for that. That's not in my text. I'm just giving you free stuff right now. Y'all like free stuff? Online, if you like free stuff, just say, I like free stuff. He'll mix in a little bit of bad. He'll allow it. Because when he's looking, he's looking for people he can trust. If I'm not mistaken, when I go back to the Old Testament book of Job, God asked the question, have you considered my servant Marshall? Have you considered Tiffany? What he was looking for is to prove to the enemy that whatever you throw at him, I got his back and he can take it. Did you consider, have you considered my servant Helen? Enemy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give it your best shot. Give it your best shot. But with me, all things are possible, and she can handle all kinds of things. Wherever she is, whether she's content or whether she's not. Whether she's full or whether she's empty. Whether she's comfortable or whether she's uncomfortable. Have you considered my servant, Ed? Dependability encourages adaptability because contentment makes us dependable, family. Amy, did you hear what I said? (laughs) 
Dependability encourages adaptability because contentment makes us dependable. When God can depend on us, you're winning. Oh, man, you're winning. Our willingness to adjust is an indication that, to God that we're contentedly walking with him. Yeah, yeah, it's an indication that, but, 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 but. that's not always the case. Yeah, yeah, because Mike Tyson once said, everybody has a plan until they get punched in the mouth. Yeah. Is your contentment like that? Pastor, I'm content until my circumstances change. Until it seems like God is not listening to my prayers. I'm content, Pastor, until my situation looks a bit weak. Last I read, when we are weak, he is strong. Y'all know your Bible? Mm. When circumstances change, we have a tendency to abandon the plan. The plan, what plan, Pastor? The plan of being accountable. The, cl- the plan of being dependable in God's eyes. But not the Apostle Paul. Paul depended on Christ for strength. And we'll need to do that as well. Some misinterpret this, 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 this passage to mean that we can be super chicks or we could be super dudes. I can do all things. And you misinterpret the text. That's why I tell you, I teach you that when you're reading the Bible, don't, don't just try to read to just get in all the, the quality. Read for quality. Ask, read a verse. I don't care if you get one verse a day in. When you're reading the verse, ask the question, what does this mean? God, show me what this means. but we'll misinterpret this verse. It's a popular verse. You can't be a super chick. You can't be a super dude. It's like the parent telling little Johnny, you can do all things, baby. You you can be what you want to be and do what you want to be. But I'm like, have you looked at little Johnny? Little Johnny is bad. And if little Johnny don't get some correction, some guidance, some real truth, little Johnny is headed for heartache. And I don't want that to be you. Are you a little Johnny, a little Jessica? (laughs) So here's what verse 13 means in context. Paul learned to depend on Jesus, and he became a whenever and whatever kind of Christian. Yeah. Yeah. This wasn't a spiritual solution, a, a super spiritual solution, like we can do all things. It doesn't matter what we can, what, 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 what we're facing it was a super important ingredient to produce something. Can I give that to you again? It wasn't a super spiritual solution. It was a super, it was a super important ingredient. Following, following God's lead is the recipe for contentment. And when you follow Jesus, I've learned that you'll look more like Clark Kent than Superman. I can do all things. Yes, you can. Yes, you can, but in his strength and his power, with his timing, with his finances, with his ability, (laughs) with his vision, with his wisdom, can I go on? With his guidance, can I give you this for free? The Holy Spirit is the only one that knows his way back to heaven, so if you're going to walk this out, everybody say walk it out, you got to follow him, his guiding, don't do that. That's not for you. He's not for you. Man. You'll look more like Clark Kent than Superman when you do it God's way. But through our connection with Christ, God continues to make a way. And what separated the author author, is the same goal that separates us. And I'm going to let you go with this. Every recipe has a goal in mind. The goal is to produce something. That's the goal. Bread is made from water, sugar, yeast, salt, and vegetable oil. Without one of those ingredients, it's not bread. And with the right amount of heat, mm, 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 you'll have a perfect product. You hear what I said? 
Oh, man. And the recipe for a happy life, Paul said, takes adaptability and dependability. But don't forget the heat part. Did it hit different? But don't forget the heat part. You got, you're, you're adaptable, check. You're dependent on God, check. I'm following him. I'm trusting and I'm praying. I'm leaning. But the heat part, the heat is how we're refined. You know, you, you, you can't grow through without going through. Oh, man. It takes the correct amount of heat in our lives to produce the right result. Yeah. And the recipe for happy life is not complete without the right amount of heat. So yeah, you can do all things. Hear me. Not most things. Not some things. You can do all things if you know how to adapt. And if you're able to be dependable, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Let's pray for that. Father, I thank you for your feeling of contentment. Help us to live for you, to be encouraged through you, to be strengthened by you. Lord, help us to acknowledge you in everything that we do in our lives. Father, some of us are going through the, the, furnace, of, the furnace of situation right now. And we had forgotten until this moment that you've orchestrated what's going on. You're controlling the knob. <laughs> you didn't put us in the furnace, but you're controlling the knob of how much to allow. And God, you've set the timer in our lives to say 350 for 30 minutes. Someone's in a 30-minute season right now. And God is waiting. He's looking. He's looking. He's looking. He's looking in. He's peeking in. And he's checking you. You're almost done. You're almost done. You're almost done. Father, help us to see this as a reality. As people who love you, and will not turn our back on you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Martine's going to come right now and, and share a couple of closing announcements. Announcements. I want to thank all the parents and babies that came out, even on this holiday weekend. You guys are still here, and we, we appreciate you. Um, she's going to come and give us some announcements of things to look for. And remember, parents, when you, when you leave, I believe at the back, there's uh, at the connections table, there's some information for you to sign for your certificates if you had a baby dedicated today. And then there's some stuff I forgot to tell you about. I think it's a there's some little pastries and stuff that you can go ahead and cut. They were made with love. They were made with love. So enjoy those pastries. Don't all bum rest the table at one time, though. Amen? All right. All right, everybody. A few quick announcements. Next week, sign up for Church 101 with Pastor for new members. The class will be December 12th, so make sure to sign up for that at the connections table. And join us in the fun on December 19th for our ugly um, Christmas sweater Sunday. We do that every year, so be sure to come in your ugly Christmas sweater if you've got one. And we will be having a Christmas Eve online candlelight service. So we'll have all of this on the e-bulletin as well as on social media. So if you've got the app or you're following us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, you should be able to see all of those updates as well. So be sure to set a reminder for that and meet us online for our Christmas Eve candlelight. Um, and like I said before, anything else that's going on, I know, you know, December's coming up. It's going to be a busy, fun month as we're getting ready to celebrate Christmas. We'll have everything online for you guys to stay up to date with what we've got going on with Reignite Church. We want to thank you in advance for your giving. Um, there are three ways to give. You can give online, you can text to give, or you can give here in person in the back. There's a box um, behind that 
post in the middle. Uh, we want to thank you so much for being a blessing and helping us to be able to bless others. And I'd like to go ahead and pray us out. If you will join me, Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this morning, Lord, for this word that you've placed in our pastor's heart to share with us, Lord God. And pray that the scripture resonates in us throughout the week, Lord God, and we're able to find contentment, Lord, to be adaptable and dependable on you, Heavenly Father. We pray that it remains with us as we go out and we meet people, Lord God, that we can share the good news of Jesus to all that we meet, Lord God, and shine your light. Until next Sunday, I pray that you be with all of the people represented here in this room and online, Lord God. You just touch and bless. You know what's on the hearts of your people. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a great week, everybody.